So, it's pretty cool, right? For this tutorial, you can download some media files so that you can try it out yourself without having to go out and film anything. To grab the files, just load up your web browser and go to hitfilm.com slash files slash wizard dot zip. We've put the link in the video description as well. This will download a zip file to your computer. Right click it and choose extract all. We've given you two clips to play with showing both of the axes so that you can experiment with various wand effects and there's also a HitFilm Ultimate project file. If you open this project file inside HitFilm Ultimate, you'll find the complete effect shots. You can even open up the composite shots to see exactly how they're made and really dig into the layers to find out how it works. You can do all this using the free demo as well of course, which you can get from hitfilm.com forward slash demo. And I'll hand you over to Josh who will take you through exactly how to create the effect. Today we're going to be creating this effect, uh, a wand effect from Harry Potter or some other wizarding film. You can probably see a link at the bottom of the screen right now. This is where you can download some sample footage. It'll probably be this shot and another shot so you can have a go yourself at creating this effect in the demo of Hit Film. So uh, let's get started. I've already imported the footage. It's called Wizard MP4 here. Look, there's a guy shaking a stick around with no VFX. So let's right click on that and select Make Composite Shot. We don't need to change any settings, so let's just click OK. So the most laborious part of this effect is the one that we'll do first. In the future, we're going to be adding a 2D point tracker into HitFilm Ultimate, but even when we do add that, unfortunately, the end of this wand is so faint that you would probably have to track it by hand. So what we need to do is select New Layer, Point, and then let's go to the start of our effects somewhere around here. As you can see, there's no real wand to track onto here anyway. We'll use some artistic license, but we can see it fairly clearly here. We'll click on the point and let's move it somewhere around the start of the wand. Then we need to expand the point and go to the position property and click to start recording keyframes. Now we can step forward a few frames and then reposition the point step forward another few frames, reposition the point, and so on. Now, in this video, he's shaking the stick around quite a bit, so as you can see, doing a keyframe only every few frames isn't really going to work out. So I'm going to cheat and fast forward now, and all these points will be filled in for us. Well, that was easy. There it is, all tracked on over a lot of frames. What you need to remember is you don't need to really track the whole shot you just need to do the bits that you're actually going to use but uh, I've gone ahead and done the whole lot for you so that you can use this project file and have some fun. Now the next point we need to do is where the one stream is actually going to be hitting or impacting so we need to create another point. Now once you start having lots of points it's important to name them otherwise you can get in a real mess so let's click and rename our point we already have and rename it wand and then let's create a new point and we will call this one impact. Now what I'm going to do with this point is kind of try and look where I think the wand is pointing. So I'm going to go to where he starts the stream coming out of his wand, somewhere around here. And then let's just stick this point somewhere over here where he's looking, but also kind of in a direction of the wand. Again, we need to switch on the position keyframing. This one we can just do sort of whenever we want. So let's just skip forward a bit, move it down, skip forward a bit more, move it up a bit. There we go. Now if I just select these two points, you can just go through the video and you'll see we've got our points moving around. So that is all the hard, boring work done. Now let's start doing some really interesting VFX. The first part of the visual effect we're going to create is going to be the stream that comes out of the wand. We need to render this onto a layer, so go to New Layer and select Plane. Let's call it Stream, and we need this to be black. Click Create, and the video gets covered by this black layer. Don't worry about that for now. Let's go and get the lightning effect. So type in lightning. Here it is, lightning and electricity. Drop that on your stream layer. Now we can see this default lightning. Let's click on the controls here. Make sure we have our stream layer selected. Go to Layer Properties and change the Blend method to Add. Here we go, we can see our lightning on top of our footage. Now we need the lightning in the right place. Here is the lightning in the controls. Let's open it up and let's expand the Start and the End section. What we need to do is for the Start, we need to Use Layer and then select 
our wand. And then for end, we need to use layer and select impact. Now this isn't attaching properly, and that's because these values here are offsetting our position. So we need to set them to zero. Now that looks more like it. It's nice and attached to the end of the wand and it's actually attaching to our impact point as well. It's a fairly weedy looking effect at the moment and I'm not liking a whole lot of things about it. So let's try correcting those. First of all, let's get rid of the glow. It's the glow section here, change the opacity to nothing. Now I'm not liking these little bits that are sort of coming off the effect here, these branches. So we need to go to the branches section and change that to zero. That's better. And then it's all looking very thin and it seems to get thinner as it gets away from the wand rather than the opposite way around. So let's go to the start and the end. Let's make the end width as high as it will go. Let's make the start width a little bit wider as well. Well, it's better, but it's still not quite there. It's wriggling around too much. So we need to go to the wave and twitch scale, make both of these rather less. There we go. I like that but it's still really thin and I've actually increased the width as high as it will go. What we can do here is another technique. So first of all, we're gonna blur this. This might seem a bit strange, but you'll see where I'm going with this. We'll grab the blur, drop it on, and then let's increase the blur. And you can see this is making it wider, but it's also making it more transparent. And then we can use the threshold. Let's drop that on below the blur. And if we set the threshold percentage here, and now we have something that's actually about the size it was after we blurred it. And that gives us a much more sort of thicker stream that's gonna look much better once we start adding the glow and other effects. So next we wanna make it glow. And to do that, we're gonna use the blur again. So let's put the blur on. It's now soften the edge, that's a little bit nicer. And then let's use the diffuse filter. Let's put that on. Now we want to increase the diffuse. Let's put this up around 80 and put this one up about 0.7, somewhere around there. Now it's gone more transparent, but you can actually see this glowing edge around it. And this is what we want. To get rid of the transparency this time, rather than using the threshold, we're gonna use exposure. So let's drop that one on and then let's beef up the exposure. There we go, and you can really see the glow now. That's looking pretty good. I think it should glow more. Let's make that wider still. There we go. But the color's wrong. We've got some practical lighting in this shot. We've obviously got the wrong color here. So let's select the color wheels, drop those on, and let's have a look at them here. Now what we want to do is basically push all the color towards this turquoise green that we have here. So we don't do much to the highlights, maybe drag them a little bit towards it. But then with the midtones and the shadows, Let's drag them a really long way towards it. Okay, that's looking much better. That's sort of fitting the color that is cast on the actor in this shot. Now the final thing that you can do, other than maybe adding some detail with a couple more lightning streams, is to actually add some shake to this. It might sound strange, but it actually will make the effect look a little bit less like it's just been stuck on the top. So now I've added the shake effect just with its default settings and it's actually slightly blurring the edges, slightly moving it around, and it's gonna help a lot. So now we have the stream done, where do we go next? The end of the wand isn't looking particularly intense, so we need to do something about that. So we're gonna use the same trick again and create a new plane. Let's call this flare. We want that black again, and again it's sitting on the top and covering everything, so we need to go to the layer properties and set that one to add as well. Now you need to go to the effects and find the flare. There it is, light flares. Drop that on the flare plane itself. There it is, it's in the wrong position, but it's there. Let's go into the effect in the controls panel and to the hotspot position, use layer and select the wand. Now again, it's offset by this position above. So set those both to zero. And now our lens flare is attached to the wand. I'm gonna tweak this a bit to make it look better. I'm going to use a different flare type. I'm going to select the laser dot. I'm going to make that rather bigger, rather more intense. I don't like all these lines coming out of it, so I'm going to go to the rays section and I'm going to reduce the amount of rays. And then I'm going to go to global, which is where you'll find hue shift, and I'm going to move the color around 
to being more like the one that we're using elsewhere. Something like that. That looks quite good. There we go. It's nice and attached. Now it's always staying the same size and you could go through and keyframe everything and it would take a lot of time or we can just use the flicker. We can apply that and now it's sort of getting brighter and darker. You can probably just about see it, but let's make it more evident by going to the amplitude and switching that up. And now you can see it's getting brighter and darker, kind of flashing. I'm going to actually turn the intensity down a little bit and the scale up quite a bit. There we go. That's looking good. Now, some people have asked about using Action Essentials footage by Andrew Kramer. Works really well in the software, and we're going to use some of that stock right now. So I've got to go to the media. We've got this Action Essentials Sparks here. They're really great. They're all pre-keyed, but um, we're just going to drop those on. There we go. And, uh, well, they're coming out of a strange position, so let's reposition them here. Let's rotate them round. And then let's zoom out, make that a little bigger. Now, as you can see, when they're coming in, they're all silhouetted, and that's because they're using a blend method, the normal blend method. So let's go to the controls, layer properties, and again, select the add blend method. Okay, well, we're nearly there now. The only other thing I'm going to add is I'm going to go and add a new grade layer on the top, and then our old favorite, the shake. I'm going to drop that on there. This is just going to make it look a little bit more intense, like the camera is even shaking from the force of what he's doing. Now there's endless tweaks you can make to this to make it look even better. If, if we go back to the original example, I've done a whole load of extra stuff here. I've added more grading, more flicker, I've added these extra little bits of lightning flicking off, and I've uh, changed the intensity of our shake over time, so when the effect is meant to be more intense, the screen is shaking more. We'd really love to see what you guys come up with. Be creative, try out different things, and make sure you post them on YouTube and select that broadcast option so we can see them as well.